Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. Today we are going to build a CUDA-enabled version of OpenCV for Jetson. One of the things you may have noticed is that if you look at the default OpenCV installation on your Jetson, it is not CUDA-enabled. In this video, we are aiming to fix that. One of the Jetson experts in the community, Michael DeGans, has a script which will build OpenCV from source with CUDA support. Let's close this up. In the mdgons repository on GitHub, there is a repository named nano build opencv. Let's copy the address. Let's clone that repository and switch over to that repository's directory. Now we open up the build script. Let's scroll down a little. These are the dependencies we are going to install. Let's scroll down a little more. Here we have the OpenCV build options. They are stored as CMake flags, which are passed to the compiler. Let's take a look at the OpenCV documentation. We'll open up another web browser. We are working with the 4.5.4 release. OpenCV Tutorials, Introduction to OpenCV, and then OpenCV Configuration Options Reference. This is the documentation page for all of the build options for OpenCV. There is an extensive list as there are very many options to build OpenCV. It's from this documentation that we figure out what the CMake flags should be. For example, here's the flag to turn on CUDA support. One flag of note is the CUDA Arch Bin flag. This is a list of GPU architectures which this build will support. In this case, it is all the Jetsons, TX1, Nano, TX2, Xavier, and Orens. If you remember, the build machine has an architecture of 7.2, which is a Xavier. You can modify the list to build OpenCV for just one specific architecture. This will reduce the build time and size of the resulting library. Also, we will need to change the CUDNN version to match the Jetpack release for which we are building. In this case, the library version is 8.6. Let's change that, save everything, and close it up. Enough talk. Let's start building. We can specify the OpenCV version on the command line. Let's go for 4.5.4. And we are off to the races. The build takes a long time. On a Jetson Nano, it takes 8 to 12 hours depending on the build configuration. Of course, on a AGX Orin, it takes a lot less time. We need to type in the password for system install. Password. And off we go to the install. One more question. The build files are in the slash TMP directory. You can remove them if you want. However, I keep them around in case I want to rebuild OpenCV. That way I don't have to recompile the world from scratch. Installation complete. Let's switch tabs back to JTOP. We'll need to restart JTOP. Let's switch over to the info tab. We see that OpenCV 4.5.4 is installed with CUDA. Let's open up the file browser. The build files are in the slash TMP directory. They are in the build underscore OpenCV directory. Let's put them in the home directory for now. When we switch over to the home directory, there they are. Let's go back over to the home directory. Let's figure out how big this puppy is. We'll check out the folder properties. 1.7 gigabytes. Let's see what Python has to say about this. Let's import OpenCV. The OpenCV module is named CV2. Now let's get the OpenCV build information. That went by just fast enough not to be able to read it. Let's scroll up a ways. This gives us all the OpenCV build information, version 4.5.4.
Here are all the different media and video libraries included in the build. And here's the good stuff. We have CUDA installed. All of the Jetson GPU architectures are supported in this build. Red Dog, Red Dog, 53, 62, 72, 87, hike. And we also support CUDNN. It's demo time. For our demo today, we are going to use a deep neural network. The DNN does face detection. It's located in the OpenCV Zoo. I have cloned the OpenCV Zoo already. I have modified the demo to better fit to the capabilities of the USB camera that I'm using. Let's take a look at those changes. Let's open up JTOP so that we can monitor the GPU usage. Now let's launch the demo without CUDA support. There I am. Let's move this up here. Okay, we see that we are getting FPS somewhere in the 17 to 20 range. This is only using the CPU. Let's take a look at the CPU. They appear to be pretty busy. Let's switch back over there. Let's look at a Nobel Prize winner. That's pretty good. It's pretty uh, performant. The FPS counter moves around quite a bit, but when you'll see it in person, it looks pretty smooth. But it's not great. Let's take a look at the CUDA version. Let's grab this line. It has a secret incantation on it. These flags tell OpenCV to use CUDA. Why, here I am again. You can see that the frame rate jumped up. Uh, it looks like it's in the 50-ish range, 55, 45, somewhere in there. You can see a lot more of the GPU is being used. Let's take a look at our CPU usage. Oh, they calmed down quite a bit, so they about cut in half. You can see that we get GPU usage kind of moves around a little bit. Let's take a look at our Nobel Prize winner. Let's see if they're still there. Yes, they are. It's a little bit of work to get OpenCV working on CUDA. However, if you need the performance boost, it's well worth it. But just make sure before you start, if you have a specific application, that it is CUDA enabled in the OpenCV library. Hey, if you got this far, you might as well like the video. And if you have not already, please subscribe. It helps the channel immensely. At least that's what the other YouTube channels say. <laughs> Thanks for watching.